This video will cover the basics of long jumping on 120 tech, the different strafing techniques, some technical terms and their meaning. Alright, so a long jump is when you run, jump and land. This is the most basic type of jump and is arguably the most important one. To long jump, you firstly need to know how to air strafe. I'm assuming that you already know how to do this, but just to be on the same page, pressing A or D and moving your mouse in their directions will make you gain speed. There are many videos on how to do this, and this is not the point of this one. Distance in the game is the displacement between the point where you jump and land. This means that the path you take will heavily affect it. Defined as the size of the gap you jump across, blocks have flat faces which are parallel to each other and have no elevation difference between them. Edge is the distance between the point where you jump and the edge of the block you're jumping from. The lower the better. It refers to the tech you release your forward key relative to your jump key. It is positive if you release after jumping and negative if you release before. W release is one of the most important things in a long jump and can completely mess your LG up. Releasing late will mess with your first drift and releasing early will fuck your pre. Deviation refers to how much you went diagonally relative to your starting point. Jumping in a straight line will get you zero deviation. Deviation slightly increases the distance you need to land blocks, and you need to keep it to a minimum. 10 or below should be good enough. Is the amount of ticks that you spent crouched during your jump. You want to keep this as low as possible by crouching as late as possible when landing and by tapping bind as fast as possible if you're using it. A good crouched should be below 10, with 1 being the lowest. Overlap refers to the amount of ticks that you spent while pressing both direction keys simultaneously. You want to keep this as low as possible. Dead air refers to the amount of ticks that you spent when not pressing A or D. You want to keep this as low as possible by starting to strafe right after you jump and by strafing continuously until the end. Height refers to the maximum height that you reached during your long jump relative to the point where you jumped. This refers to the total amount of time in seconds that you were airborne. Strafes have air times, which refer to the percentage of your air time that went into each strafe. Refers to the percentage of ticks that you spent gaining speed or how good your mouse movements and key presses were in synchronization. The higher the better. Your pre is the speed that you have when you jump. For a long jump, the max pre is to 50. If you are going for distance, this needs to be to 50 if possible. It refers to the angle in decrease from the center line of a strafe. The wider you strafe, the greater this value will be. Strafing in VNL is harder due to a dead period of time during any jump. Near the start of any jump, your air acceleration is much lower than during the rest of it. This makes gaining speed during this time very hard and requires you to adjust. This was put in place to prevent players from doing 360 peaks around corners. Normal strafing is similar to what people do in SKZ and KZT. Strafing uniformly and continuously from start to finish. Normal strafing is all about the first 3 strafes. A good normal strafe long jump should have the first 3 strafes with specific air times and widths. The ideal normal strafe would look something like this. Dead strafing is when people do the weird second strafe where they kinda stop. The weird second strafe is to adjust for the dead zone during the jump. It requires you to have a long and wide first strafe a longer but narrower second, and standard strafes for the rest. 
that strafing is one of the best ways to strafe in VNL due to how air acceleration works where the first part of your jump has less air acceleration, meaning that it is harder to gain speed. The ideal dead strafe would look something like this. Binding in VNL refers to using the crouch jump bind, also known as the LJ bind. Crouch jumping gives you an additional 1.2 units of height, making you travel further. LJ binds usually include minus forward and give you perfect W release. However, Having minus forward is not recommended as it completely messes your release timing and is not allowed in a few servers. Note that the LJ bind does not work when bound to scroll and the multiple inputs messes with your crouch stamina. Nulling is using aliases that prevent you from overlapping. Since you cannot overlap your keys, some people use nulls to one key which just means that you hold AOD and only press and release the other to strafe. Nulling can have varied results on players. It is not recommended as you don't need them to be good at KZ. You also cannot do our father tag on KZT with nulls. However, if you still want to use nulls and become the player you always wanted to be, there are tutorials on YouTube. To long jump, you want to run and get as much pre as possible. Once you reach that pre, jump and release your forward key at the same time and start strafing. There are two main styles of strafing in VNL, normal strafes and dead strafes. Each has their own ups and downs, but dead strafing seems to be better according to the community. It is very important to release forward at the right time and to not press the bind for too long if you are using it, as it will make you crouch during your first strafe, which is arguably the most important one. To land a long jump block, your edge minus the distance of your LJ must be higher than the block gap. This is why edge is very important. Maps like Nassau and Baxter have good long jump rooms. Typing this bug in most GoKZ servers will enable the setting. Strafe stats will enable printing of this bug stats in your console. This bug does everything like GoKZ's stat registration system but better. Gives you additional info such as strafe efficiency and will also print stats even when GoKZ does not register one. JS always is similar to this bug, but it gives you stats regardless of any movement that you make when landing or get teleported. Most of the time, it will give you inaccurate stats, especially for drops and uneven surfaces. This setting should not be used when you're trying to start. While JS always is active, your stats will not have tiers and will not register as PB. JS always will always try to print a stat no matter what and it will give you useful information such as your edge when you fail a stat or when you walk off the edge. To turn this bug, strafe stats and JS always off, type the command again. If you want to see your key presses, overlap and speed, you can enable MHUD settings. Type MHUD and enable speed and key presses. MHUD will tell you whether or not you overlap by changing key color. The only reason why long jumping is so complicated is because of how air acceleration works in vanilla CSGO. If you want to LG4, you need to practice consistently. Being able to consistently land 240 blocks should be your goal if you're thinking of map running. There's much more about long jumps, but I hope this helps.